If you're shopping for a compact SUV, the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan should be high up on your list. The Tiguan is a very rounded SUV that looks great, is very spacious and practical, and provides a nice, quiet and comfortable ride. There are little changes for the 2021 model due to Volkswagen preparing a bigger refresh in 2022. However, the Tiguan is still a fantastic SUV, so if you're interested, let's get started. Before I get started, I want to thank my friends at the Auto Barn Volkswagen who made this video possible. If you're in the market for a brand new or used Volkswagen, please check out this dealership. Their URL is in the description of this video. The changes for 2021 are minimal. The base S and SE trims receive new 17-inch wheel designs. The SE also receives adaptive cruise control and a new MIB3 infotainment system. The top trim level, the SEL Premium R-Line, gains power-adjustable front passenger seat. That's pretty much it for 2021. The outside of the Volkswagen Tiguan has a very edgy and sophisticated German look. The front end is dominated by that large sloping hood and that big chrome grille. The full LED headlights that you see here is only available on the top SEL Premium R-Line trim and they have a very unique design, especially with the dual daytime running lights setup. Upper trims of the Tiguan also receive fog lights below. Speaking of below, the lower bumper that you see here is unique to the R-Lines and is dominated by painted black cladding. The side profile to the Tiguan looks more like a mid-size SUV due to the long wheelbase and tall roof. Case in point, the Tiguan is 3 inches longer than the Honda CRV, with a wheelbase that is 5 inches longer. The 20 inch wheels that you see here is included with the R-Line trims and looks absolutely fantastic. All other trims receive 17 inch or 19 inch alloy wheels. The back side of the Tiguan has a narrow top and a wide bottom, overall pretty simplistic. All trims receive LED taillights and on the bottom you see two chrome surrounds for the exhaust. The trunk of the Tiguan is enormous for this class and that's because you can opt for third row seats. No other compact SUV offers this anymore. On the left and right side you have handles to fold down the second row and deep cubby holes as well. Underneath the bottom cover there's a lot of space hiding the spare tire, tools and space to hide your privacy cover. In the second row of this SEL R-Line, you are greeted with black leather everywhere and the seats and door panels have this really edgy and sporty design. There are two sets of car seat latches, a pair of vents, USB port, and the 12V outlet. Remember, I mentioned about Tiguan's extra length and wheelbase. I'm 5 feet 10 and I have maybe 6 to 7 inches of legroom left and about 3 to 4 inches of headroom. The seats can lean back as well. Moving on to the first row, those stainless steel pedals stick out right away and that's included with this R-Line. The steering wheel has a sporty design with white stitching and a flat bottom. Buttons on the right, controls the music, scrolling, voice command, and the available digital cockpit which replaces the traditional gauge cluster you see. Buttons on the left, control volume, adaptive cruise control, that's standard on this SEL trim, and all the assist features now that are standard across all trims, they include side assist, which is blind spot monitoring, rear traffic alert, and front assist, which is auto braking. Lane assist, which keeps the Tiguan in between the lanes, is standard with the SEL trim. As for the huge digital cockpit, you can see things such as the range, your assist system, navigation, audio, phone, car status in the middle. Now moving on to the infotainment screen, all Tiguans receive an 8 inch color display infotainment screen with proximity sensor and voice control. Proximity sensor is actually really cool and reveals menu items before you even touch the screen. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are compatible. The graphical interface is modern and very responsive and there are touch buttons on the side for quick navigating. Climate controls are physical and they are on the bottom, however if you want to control the temperature through the touchscreen, you can do so as well. Heated steering wheel and heated seats have a shared physical button and leads to some confusion when you want to turn one off or the other off. Underneath the climate controls you have two USB ports, an aux port, 12V outlet, and wireless charging that's standard on this SELR line. 
around the shifter area you have a few buttons one for engine auto start stop which is now standard across all trims there is also one for the overhead view camera which gives you a 360 view that's really cool the screen is really high res by the way and the same goes with the backup camera the rest of the buttons are for starting the engine and electronic braking the Tiguan's with the 4-motion all-wheel drive gets a drive mode selector as well. You can choose Eco, Normal, Sport, Off-Road, and Custom, which allows you to adjust pretty much everything to your liking. On top, there are some home link buttons underneath the rearview mirror, some light controls, and controls for the massive optional panoramic sunroof. As for engine, you only get one. It is a 2-liter turbo engine that pushes 184 horsepower and 221 pound-feet of torque. Now, this engine is mated to an 8-speed automatic. All right, guys, let's go for a drive and see how this Tiguan is on the roads. First impression is, let me talk about space because I'm really surprised in terms of how much space and how roomy it is in this Tiguan. Now, this is categorized as a compact SUV, but in my opinion, it's really not. This is really like a, a mid-size SUV. There is a ton of space in here. Now, in terms of driving position, I feel like I'm sitting quite, quite high um, compared to some of the other compact SUVs I've, I've uh, reviewed recently. I'm definitely sitting a bit higher than those. And that means you get a, a bit more commanding view of the road and around you. And I think that's a good thing. And these seats, very sporty, very bolstered, right? I could definitely feel it. It's, it's hugging my back, not in a bad way. It's actually hugging it really good. It makes me feel like I'm not gonna slide around these seats. Now this R line that, that I'm testing right now comes with 20 inch wheels. And of course, with bigger wheels, you have a smaller sidewall, which means there's less cushion right it means usually usually you get stiffer more bumpier ride right now i don't feel it as much on my way home you know there's a patch where it's a lot more bumpy on this freeway a lot more bumps and patches and imperfections so i'm going to see how it feels then but right now the suspension is actually quite nice and i'm surprised by you know overall how comfortable it is so far Overall, even though I'm going low speeds right now, but I think it's a pretty quiet ride. I don't really hear much, you know, especially with these large tires. I don't hear any road noise. Wind noise is pretty quiet too. I don't hear a lot right now. Once I get up to speed, go a little quicker, I'll let you guys know. But so far, very quiet ride. Visibility, I got to say, is tremendous, tremendous huge windshield windows all around you no problems with blind spot i mean that rear window is massive but in case somehow you needed help blind spot monitor is equipped in here but no problems with visibility now rear window also very huge now i will say the middle headrest cuts in a little bit especially if it's up that's the only thing with that down you get a massive view of behind you Okay, so I'll just, just test the acceleration went about maybe 20 to 60 right there. And it's not too bad. Um, in the Tiguan, you get one engine option. It's a two liter turbo engine, you know, pushing about 180 or so horsepower. It wasn't very quick, but somewhat lively. And I would say for this class, compact SUV class, it's actually probably pretty good compared to some of the other ones that were just so slow dirt slow <laughs> uh, i think the turbo charging the extra torque and how quick it, it you know kicks in definitely helps move this tiguan so in terms of passing getting up to speed it's gonna be okay all right so now i'm on that patch of freeway a lot of imperfections dips and patches and it's a little bit bumpier uh, it's not as smooth as some of the other SUVs, but I kind of expected that with these larger tires. 
but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I've definitely felt worse on this patch. And this is a pretty bad patch right here on this freeway. And I purposely chose the worst lane in the middle. So overall, I think the suspension is not bad. So in terms of steering, that's where it's, eh, it's so-so. Uh, it, it does the job, of course, but it feels a, a little bit vague to me. Um, there is some heft, but it's, it just feels vague. It doesn't feel like you're very connected with this Tiguan. And plus, there is some play. So like this, I don't feel it much, and then I start feeling it. So there is some play, and it does feel a little bit vague. The brakes feel more or less normal. I feel like it catches on a little bit, just slightly a little bit early. But outside of that, you know, there's no surprises. So I changed the driving mode to sport mode. And I got to say, around town, it feels a lot more fun. A lot more fun with the turn on. Now, some cars, when you leave in sport mode, it gets very annoying because it holds the gear just a little bit too much. But in this Tiguan, I got to say... It, it's, it actually does a really good job. As for trim levels and pricing, the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan has five trim levels. The base S starts a tad over $25,000. If you want four motion all wheel drive, it's $1,300 more. Next, you have the SE, SE R line, SEL, and finally the range topping SEL premium R line, which is the one I'm driving today, and it starts over $39,000. To conclude, the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan does so many things well that really make it stand out from the crowd. The exterior has a stylish German look, and the premium R-Line could be confused easily for a luxury SUV. The cabin has a minimalistic design, and the digital cockpit and infotainment screen are both fantastic. There's a ton of space within, especially in the second row, and there's plenty of cargo room. And finally, the Tiguan provides a very comfortable and quiet ride. As for the bad, the steering to the Tiguan does feel a bit vague. Fuel economy is also so-so for this class. There isn't a whole lot of USB ports within, and some of the nice features are only available on the top SEL Premium R-Line. I'm giving the 2021 Volkswagen Tiguan SEL R-Line a score of 100. To learn more about it and to see where it ranks among its peers, check out driversonlyrankings.com. Thanks for watching, hit the like and subscribe to the channel, and check out these other videos.